Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we have a very special episode for you. I edit videos. I don't know if you know that. I, you know, I do all kinds of stuff besides YouTube. I'm an actual professional, um, you know, bona fide film creator, editor, and all that good stuff. And um, I just finished um, my latest project. It took me a very long time. A lot of uh, anguish, a lot of ups and downs. It was a nine month process to get this baby done. Um, but hey, it's finally done. Now, I already uploaded this, you know, a uh, couple days ago to my other YouTube channel, Redo Publishing. I'll post a link at the bottom. Um, that's, again, my, where I put all my professional work. So, again, if you like this and you're interested in seeing more, please feel free to go check out my other channel. You know, look at the other videos and, uh, yeah, we'll subscribe if you want. I mean, you know, you don't have to. And if you are in any kind of need of any kind of video editing or video creation or anything in the realm of uh, you know video and photography please feel free to hit me up okay because I'm always looking for new clients and new projects and new things to do so guys without further ado here's my latest project I hope you guys enjoy and uh, yeah all right let me just shut the hell up and let you guys watch all right so My name is Johnny Jackson. I'm a proud biracial American athlete. When you say Action Jackson, make sure you put some respect on it. There are a few alias names that I go by. Action, Ninja. The latest that my gym has been calling me is Mongoose. I'm prodigy of a young Jewish American mother and well-accomplished entertainer father for the Jackson Five. I was born in Los Angeles, California in 1976 and raised in Hollywood, California. Even though I was born with what some would call a silver spoon in my mouth, life has always been difficult and tough for me. So naturally, I'm just used to having a hard life. When I was very young, I experienced a terrible accident, smashing my mouth and breaking my teeth. It took some time to deal with all the emotional stress that came with dealing with other kids at school. No day ended without being tormented or having my feelings hurt until the day came where I naturally fed off of it. A day that came where I realized I could suffer a special amount of emotional and physical pain. I was more used to being uncomfortable than comfortable. And I asked myself, how can I capitalize on this? Martial arts and kung fu had always had my top interest as a kid. Every book report I did was inspired by Bruce Lee or Jean-Claude Van Damme. I knew I possessed something special, but my mother couldn't afford to put me into school. At the age of 16, I started taking Kung Fu Sun Tzu in the garage of a master. I was the youngest of eight guys and the smallest. Everyone else had some type of military training or was a full grown man. And I paid for it with my own hard work money through the job that I had at LA Fitness working on the weekends. I'm happy it worked out that way because I put all the blood, sweat, and tears for the training that I paid for myself. I started to develop a discipline and a self-worth. Growing up, just like any other boy, I was intrigued and infatuated by action movies. I would often portray a lot of the choreographic fighting I saw on TV. I did it so well that everybody thought I already knew karate, but I didn't know any karate. I was just good at copying a move that I already loved. Rewinding the VCR over and over, slowing down the speed to study the action of the move as careful as possible. Fighting changes every generation. You know what I had to go through to maintain competing at this level? So the script is the same, but the actor changes, and that's how I see it. My method and my technique have always been on another level. But what I've managed to do for over 20 years during the course of my career is adapt and correct my mistakes while I'm getting older and my opponents still continue being young men.
I can admit I only have a couple knockouts on my record, but I'm confident I have extraordinary power, a divine sense of rhythm, an exciting caliber of style, a ridiculous pace of cardio, and one of the most intelligent defense systems in the sport. With those assimilated weapons, that's why they call me action. It was my destiny to be here. After six fights, I was pretty sure I was gonna call it quits. I never considered myself a fighter. But after 20 fights, I knew there was no going back. Along my course, I've given up girlfriends, quit jobs, even pushed friends and family away who I believe was poison to my purpose or I felt that didn't understand me. Training the fight has always paid away for me, made me who I am, but it does not complete me. I'm a son, a brother, a nephew, a cousin, an employee, a friend, a believer in faith, God, and humanity. These very things push me to be better as a person overall. I did, however, believe there was a big purpose for me to be an entertainer that runs deep in my Jackson blood. I just had no idea at the time what it would be. I've helped pioneer this sport. I've been here since yesterday and I'll be here next year. I'm a dying breed, and as long as I avoid injury, I eat healthy, I train hard, and I stay true to my game, I bring a wealth of experience and history to any fight. Attributed by my longtime peers and teammates where I'm blessed to be a part of a team that trains in unity and raise each other's levels through our difficult combats, we have coaches that share their vast knowledge and strong support. If you add up all the fights, all my eight-man tournaments, all my experience in history, all the challenges I've been through, you ain't gonna find another fighter with my record. No other Johnny Jackson exists anywhere. I know because every tournament I enter, the promotion always has to switch me to the next weight class up. And even then, the only guy that beats me is the guy that wins the tournament. Sometimes people want to count you out before your actual time is up. But if I didn't believe in myself and listen to my conscience instead of listening to others, I would have never overcame the challenges I faced for the last decade. I would have never got a chance to visit the cities that I did, or people I met, or came into contact with all the friends that I have now. I would have never got that WBC belt that I hold in high respect. And more importantly, I would have never got the achievement and the respect from my peers, team, family, and coaches, and other fighters. I never asked anything from this sport, no money, no fame, no contract, simply that it be with me in the time of need. I just love it, and I'm still down. I'm still not done yet. I'm still hungry, I'm still on a mission, I'm still dangerous, still a serious threat to anyone in the MMA and Muay Thai world that competes in my weight class. If you take a fight with Johnny Jackson, you're at a level where you and your coach have already considered the worst fate because you already know I'm willing to go to that dark place come fight night. Because make no mistakes, in the light, I'm prepared to shine. I like to have a lot of fun in the gym. I like to dance, I like to be a clown, I like to make everybody laugh. And even if it's at the cost of my own foolishness or humility, I think we need that. I think we need more love and laughter. I've been in this sport for at least 20 years. I never get tired of it because fighting is not going anywhere anytime soon. I still have to motivate myself, though, to get out of bed on a freezing, chilly morning and run five miles or have a second late-night workout. Those are things that a vet fighter must be doing ever so often and hold important. I'm what you refer to as an enthusiast. You don't have to pay me to fight. Loving and fighting is just something that comes natural to me. I'm not scared of any man anymore. I've been through the worst-case scenarios. I've drowned in bloodshed, I've returned the favor, and I've already experienced devastation through my losses. My family, they have a lot of respect for me. They're very supportive. They don't like to watch, but they are proud of the attention that I get, and it's starting to grow on them. I wish they were more involved in my earlier stage because when family is involved, the fighter is stronger, and that's important. I've come a long way. I've taught myself a lot. I show no signs of stopping anytime soon. I know I was sent here to aspire and born to inspire. God bless and let the love of the sport take you to a new place. My name is Johnny Jackson. Thank you for listening to my story. <laughs>